When you think about the exposure triangle, this is usually something that's described when it comes to photography, but I wanna teach you what this means for video and why it matters to getting a very good looking video versus things looking weird and crazy. You have three points when it comes to the exposure triangle, and that's the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. These are important because these deal with the exposure. So you see this, like that word exposure is how bright or how dark something is in the simplest terms. Can you see the white table without it looking like an infinity white? Can you see the details of the black parts of my shirt without it look like an infinity black? So that way you see details, textures. This is why things in film are considered cinematic cinematic, very filmic, because they take into account all of these things that we're going to be talking about in this video, and it makes it look really nice and very well done. Now, you don't have to be a cinematographer or videographer, but you do want to know some pointers when it comes to videos, especially when you're investing in cameras and lenses like these. If you can remember these three things that I'm going to be teaching you, this aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO, and byproduct of that is going to include the frame rates and the way that the relation of this content works, this will help you tremendously when you're trying to figure this stuff out. We did an exhaustive live stream breaking these concepts down where you can see the icons on the screen, but this is just a little bit more in depth than what we did there, but that one's a really good example. Check that live stream out if you have some time. When you pick your frame rate, whether that's 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second is what most people choose. You can record in 60 frames per second. It'll just kind of have like a sports kind of a look. And you can slow that down if you want to later, but choose between 24 or 30. It honestly kind of doesn't matter. 24 is used for more cinematic stuff. 30 is used for like soap operas, sports sometimes, and like TV and news. Most YouTubers also use 30 frames per second, but either one, it doesn't matter. Pick whichever one you like. I go with 24. I've done it for 30 at, at different times, but I just like 24. When you think about that, whatever you pick, cool. Keep that number in your head. You're gonna multiply times two, whichever one you chose. We'll stick with 24 for the rest of this video. Because in my camera, I need to now times two this for the shutter speed. You got the aperture, shutter speed, ISO for the exposure triangle. Because my frame rate is 24, when I multiply that times two, I get 48. So I now need to set in my camera the 1 48th of a second for the shutter speed. This will look like a fraction. You will have like a one slash whatever number, but here in the US, based on the way the camera system is set up, the closest that you can get is 1 50th of a second or one over 50, or it just may say 50. Set that number in your camera. Now, because that's set, imagine like lock symbols on those. You won't change those. Because this is now set, that means that one, your frame rate is set so that you have 24 individual frames frames or pictures per second, your shutter speed. So when you wave your hand around, the motion looks perfect. It looks the way it's supposed to. You don't look very choppy and weird looking. I'm um, like, you're on a really bad live stream or a trip, or you don't look like you're super jittery and doped up on coffee. This will make sure that the motion blur is right. When you think about the exposure triangle, the reason why the shutter speed is included is because in photography, if you make that number higher, you will be able to capture things like fast moving objects, but that makes your image darker. When you lower this number, you can get some really very creative of looks. Um, that's how you see like the light drawing and things like that because it's super duper slow. But we don't need either of those in video right now. We just need it to look normal. So when you set this at 1 50th of a second for those in the US, this will work fine for you. You won't need to change it unless you change the frame rate. So any shutter speed stuff is related to your frame rate. The next thing that you wanna go to on your camera is going to be the aperture. This is also called the F stop. And you will see this where it looks just like a whole number or it'll look like a decimal. So you may see this at F 1.8 or F12, F16, whatever the case is. You most commonly will see like an F3.5 to 5.6 most commonly referred to on like a kit lens. The reason why you see these numbers on the lens is because the aperture is connected to the lens. It has nothing to do with the camera. Your camera's reading that information, which is why you see it. And I used to think that I needed to buy a different camera in order to get a lower aperture. That's not true. You need a better lens in order to get a lower aperture. So this one is the 10 to 18 F4 lens. And this means that it can only go as low as F4. In this one, I can't get a blurry background. Anything that is a 
an F3.5 or higher is going to give you a deeper depth of field, which means that everything will be in focus. This is great if you're in art. This is great if you are vlogging or doing anything like that. That way people can see what are the things around you. The reason why lenses like the Sigma 16 is highly praised is because it has an F1.4 aperture. Anything at the F2.0 or lower on your camera gives you the blurry background. So just remember it's a lens based thing not a camera based thing. So this matters with your exposure because you can adjust this in your camera and the lower this number is, the brighter things are. The larger this number is, the darker that things are. When you're working with the kit lens, which most people are when they're first getting started, you want this to be as low as possible. The reason why you see F3.5 to 5.6 is because when you turn your camera on and you'll see this lens pop out, as I'm zooming in, and out, the aperture is also changing too. It's not like this 10 to 18, which has a constant aperture, which means it stays at f1.4 no matter if I zoom from 10 to 18. The kit lenses and cheaper lenses like that that have a variable aperture range doesn't work like that. This is why when you zoom in and out, you'll see your image gets darker or it looks weirder. And you say, well, I didn't change anything. I only zoomed in and out. That's your lens aperture changing because it's not a constant aperture lens. That's why lenses again, like the Sigma 16 or my Sony 35 millimeter F1.8 lens, that number means something. It means no matter where I go in the focal range, not for these, these are primes, but something like this here, the Tamron 17 to 28 lens, it's an F2.8. No matter if you go from 17 millimeters to 28 millimeters, you can stay at F2.8 and maintain a somewhat blurry background. So just know that when it comes to the aperture. When you're working on something like your kit lens, you want to make sure that that number is as low as it can go. So no matter where you zoom in or out to get the framing that you want, you want to make sure that you're setting that number as low as it can go. For our purposes, let's just assume that this is F3.5. I understand where people are coming from when they're looking at the best settings video or the best settings for this camera or that one. The best settings video is, in my opinion, the dumbest videos that we will make, but it's the ones that people will search for. And I'm gonna do one, but this one is more important than that video because your environment differs from mine. Maybe you have a window, maybe you don't, maybe you have control lighting, maybe you don't. Who knows what is going on in your environment for the lighting situation and that is what's going to de determine how you set stuff up. If I say Alexa turn the lights off but you copy and paste my settings, Alexa turn the lights off. Okay. Yeah now she want to listen. <laughs> the fact that now this may be the lighting that you're working with, copying my settings is going to give you a totally different look. This is why this stuff doesn't work and it's not beneficial to you trying to make content. And then you'll say and come back to the video, I copied all of your settings, my video doesn't look like yours, is because you don't understand the aperture, shutter speed, and the ISO and how to adjust and adapt that for your settings. But I'm going to teach you in this video. Alexa turn the light on. Okay. That just looks funky and ugly. So now that we've gone through the aperture, we've gone through the shutter speed, these are things that you probably won't change too often unless you need to adapt things. The other thing that you want to consider and now change last is the ISO. This doesn't stand for anything. It just more or less is considered like artificial lighting. I'm going to show you the difference between I'm set at my shutter speed right now is 150 of a second because I'm at 24 frames per second. My aperture is at f1.4, the lowest that my lens can go just so you can get a little bit of blur behind me even though it's not much behind me but the last thing that i'm going to change now is the iso and these are literally in order at the bottom from left to right on your screen this should make it easier with remembering the shutter speed the aperture and then the iso so i'm going to adjust this from iso 125 to this is what some people when i get comments from them this is what they're doing this is where they're sitting they're at iso 1000 or 800 this is ISO 800. This does not look well. My skin tones look weird. The table looks weird. The details in my clothes and stuff looks weird. But if you copy and paste settings, this is the kind of stuff that you'll get. What is a good identifier for the ISO is just to hold your hand up, the inside of your hand. Doesn't matter what, like especially if you're, you're dark skinned or something like that, you can turn your hand around the other way just because 
you don't want to expose for the the brighter part of your skin but if you're pretty close like mine is not too bad then you can just honestly turn your hand around and bring that ISO down until you can see the details. But I like to use this side of my hand because even though it's brighter, it will account for any things that are white colored like paper, uh, white font and stuff like that in my clothes. And I'll bring this down until I can see details in my skin tones. And you can bring this down a little bit more and then I'm back at the 125. If I brought this to like 300 or 320 up to here, like that's too much, this looks bad. And you can have a brighter look, it's fine, but look at the details in the hand versus when I bring this down, you can now see, uh, even if I bring that down to 125 or 160, you can leave it there for right now. You can still de see details in the table. You can see details in my hand. So of course, when I flip it over, you can see. That's a good way to figure out what your ISO should be. Now, granted, if you're sitting in front of the sun, that may be a little bit harder to figure out, but just try to get for your face and your clothes. It's fine if you have a light behind you that's a little bit blown out. If you can't adjust it, you can't adjust it, but some things you just have to kind of deal with based on your environment. This is a very simple breakdown when it comes to the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO, but this is also why you need to understand this stuff so when you pop on a different lens, you go from a kit lens to the Sigma 16, your settings are not going to stay the same. You will need to adapt and change. So hopefully this brings some clarity to what it means when you're adjusting your exposure triangle or things like that. If you can remember these three things and it's literally in order from left to right on your camera, it's the shutter speed, it's the aperture, the ISO. When you think about these things and your camera settings and how this works together, this is how you can continue to get a consistent look. And to adjust these settings in your camera, if you can't do that, you need to be in manual exposure settings so that your camera can do it. If you're rocking in auto, the camera is adjusting everything for you no matter what you do. So if you hold up something dark and you hold it up to the lens and you're trying to say, well, this is the such and such remote and I want you to see everything around it is gonna get dark and it's gonna refocus. If you don't want that, you need to adjust manual settings like I taught you in this video so that you know. If you plan to check out the Sigma 16 lens, if you really like this lens and you wanna check it out for your specific camera, check out the video on the screen. I'll walk you through how much distance and space you need to actually get a look like this and even better.